What's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Aaron Nix and this is the WrestlePlug YouTube channel. It's time to review WWE Smackdown. It's all about tag team wrestling on this episode of Smackdown. I'm really excited about that because I feel like WWE, if it nailed it down, could easily have the most prominent and intriguing tag team division, especially as AEW's tag team division is so up and down. They don't know who's going to be in the trios, who's going to be in the tag, who's winning, who's not. It's so all over the place, which is a shame, because in terms of depth, AEW definitely has the best tag team division. But SmackDown is very much looking like it's in good control of tag team wrestling. And it opens, of course, with the rematch of sorts. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus versus the Viking Raiders. Banger after banger after. But I, I cannot honestly remember the last time Sheamus had a match where I wasn't like... That was fucking amazing. Probably matching the night. Yeah, it was matching the night, to be honest. It was pretty good. Um, I thought all the tag team matches, to be honest, delivered on what they were supposed to do. But this match was excellent. Drew McIntyre and Sheamus pick up the win, which I think is right. They move on in the bracket tournament. Of course, you've got all these teams vying. Eight teams, essentially. Uh, the winners, of course, will face the Usos for the Undisputed Tag Team Toss, which is going to be a banger. Uh, so, yeah. With the look of how the bracket went, this is definitely the right decision. And also, the Viking Raiders still came out of this looking very, very strong. And a big, big moment as well. It was lovely to see those Den Boy armbands on the Viking Raiders. A really touching moment. Of course, Kevin Owens later in the night wearing his J armband and closing the show with that on was very fucking cool to see. You know, at the end of the day, wrestling, less tribalism, more enjoyment, more passion, more love for each other. Particularly when things, unfortunately, get as tragic as they have been over the past week. LA Knight comes out and smashes up some jobber, even though Bray Wyatt was trying to kind of get in his head a little bit with some of the silly sound effects and mind games. And then, right after he smashes him up, we get the return of the Firefly Funhouse. So, Bray Wyatt has come back, and he's batshit insane, obviously, and he's got all these different things going on, and we've got Uncle Howdy, and... You know, is he going to be like old school Bray Wyatt with the family? Or is he going to be the fiend? Or is it all these things? And then you've got the Firefly Funhouse. It's like, and it's good that he can call upon all these different things. But it's just so much going on. And not much of it really makes any sense. And I know it's not entirely supposed to make sense. Because you're supposed to be like, oh god, this is really unhinged. But at this point, it just feels a bit too silly. And a bit stupid. I'm not feeling the, the fear factor of it all. All I'm thinking is, God, this guy feels like he's overacting like crazy on so many different things. I like the Firefly Funhouse in certain aspects. I just don't think it suits in this current format and the current way that Bray Wyatt is. I, it doesn't work for me. It just doesn't. Although, weirdly enough, I love Rambling Rabbit. I think he's adorable. I love the little character. I think he's cute. The way he's like kind of scared of the dog. I just think he's so fucking adorable. I don't know why. Obviously, I'm a huge animal lover, as everyone knows. Um, so maybe that's it, but I do, I do like the characters to a certain degree, I think they are funny, they are adorable, especially Rambling Rabbit, but, you know, also Bray Wyatt's ass crack, what's that all about? Hiya! I wouldn't know if you had Hungry Bum or not, all I can see is your whopper crack, son! The only match that, frankly, I could not give a shit about was Los Lotharios, who, by the way, are very talented and have way too much charisma to be in this position of basically being ludicrous main event jobbers. And by main event, I mean the show, not the main event of the show. Um, they lost to Hit Row, who suck. I, and it's not even like all of Hit Row. Let's be honest, it's top dollar. That guy is not a good wrestler. I'm sorry, I hate to be a cunt. I do. And people think I enjoy this. I don't. As a big guy myself, <clears throat> similar sort of size and build to it, and yes, haha, ha, very funny. All my wrestling friends messed to me, oh, I saw you on SmackDown again. Man, I wouldn't even be stupid enough to try and go over the top row because I'm not a moron. But the bottom line is that he's not very good, and his gear looks shit. I hate this velour basketball sh He looks tacky. He looks cheap. He looks like a Sports Direct megastar. That's what he looks like, and that's not a good thing. You don't look like a wrestler. Act like a fucking wrestler. Go and get some proper fucking gear. If you want to know how to do this gimmick properly, go and look at the Street Profits on Raw. They're fucking fantastic, and also world-class wrestlers to boot, which obviously helps a lot, but their gear is on point, and it works for them, and they've worked very hard to get it right. Top Dollar looks like a fucking trash bag. I'm sorry, but he does. He looks terrible. I do not like the gear. I think it looks unprofessional. It's it's tacky. It's really tacky. You know what he reminds me of? Um, back in the day, he used to go around your mate's fucking council flat and they'd have Burberry sofas. You're like, oh, really? Come on, man. And hey, if he was on the indies or whatever, 
I kind of forgive it to a certain degree because I appreciate how hard it is, the hustle, the money that's needed. But when you're fucking in WWE, on the biggest show WWE has in SmackDown, the one that gets all the viewers, the one that makes all the money, sorry, do better. Do better. Honestly, you're like a homeless LeBron James. It's not good, man. But they pick up the win uh, by cheating. They've essentially turned them heel because Top Dollar is now a whingy bitch and doesn't like the fact that everyone's picking on him and making fun of him because he stacked it over the top rope. So good for them for turning it into an angle. But again, I think they suck. And by the way, I gave Top Dollar my worst wrestler of the year on the end of year awards and I'm not moving off of that. I personally think he's awful. I really do. And it, it, it's not good. I'd like him to prove me wrong. I'd like him to do good. But I've not seen anything. By the way, Ashanti the Adonis and B-Fab, those two are fucking brilliant. They look great. If anything, he should be a single star with a heel manager. You should let her do all the talking and kind of move top dollar on. Because what made him, you know, appealing to a certain degree is the fact that he's massive. And that doesn't count either. Because ultimately, he's lost all that weight. So he's really got nothing going on, has he? Moving on. Charlotte Flair comes down to the ring and says, yo, look at me, I'm all shiny and I'm a champion. And Sonya Deville comes out and cheap shots her and leaves. And I honestly thought, what's the fucking point in that? Also, Adam Pearce looked like an absolute goober. He just kind of stood there like, what are you doing that for? I'm to... Fucking pointless, pointless. It's almost like they have no idea what to do with Charlotte Flair, um, even though they put the belt on her. They will don't put the belt on her then. And don't get me wrong, I'm her biggest fan. I think she's fucking incredible. But come on, have some idea of what to do with one of the best women's wrestlers of our generation, yeah? Sticking with women's wrestling, they're trying to repackage Lacey Evans again. You just tried to repackage her as this likeable babyface. Oh, you know, feel sorry for me. You know, I gave up my life for the military career, blah, blah, blah. And now they're trying to bring her back as Cobra from WCW. Remember that? Cobra. Fucking state of it. Fucking state of it. Terror. I feel sorry for Lacey Evans because she's got all the tools. You know what? Why didn't you just let her carry on with the original gimmick? You know, that she was this kind of like upstanding lady with a right hand. You know, it just worked. It was simple. It was effective. And I actually thought she was really good. If the fans are booing her, so fucking what? Just make her an Uber heel then. And if the fans don't like it, tough fucking tits, mate. Not everyone needs to be a fucking bombastic model, you know? And to be fair, Lacey Evans is pretty fucking hot anyway. I mean, all the women's wrestlers are fucking astounding, but... I really don't get it. I don't get why we have to keep fucking around with her. And the more you do that, the more people are going to be disinterested in her. So actually, what you're doing is essentially setting her up to fail again. It's the next quarterfinal with the tag team bracket. It's the Brawling Brutes versus Imperium. What a surprise. This was fucking awesome. Love the fact that Sheamus and Volta both kind of stayed away from ringside, which left it to the two teams to have it out. Just fantastic. By the way, Imperium, they are so good in the ring. And also, um, Kaiser, it has to be said, he's really fucking funny. Really entertaining, really obnoxious, good character. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, a little bit more quiet on the flip side of things. Um, but he works, but they're both astounding wrestlers. They're like technical machines. And I love this whole idea that the mat is sacred. And of course, do you know what? We all shit on the Butch thing. Then we, oh, stupid name. He's never going to be anything. Mate, he's one of the bigger things on SmackDown. Everyone loves him. He's so over with the fans. He's really found his place in the Brawling Brutes. He's alongside a big megastar like Sheamus, who feels like a big deal at the moment. So you know what? Shut up. Stop whining. It's just a fucking name. Get on it. Same with Gunter, by the way, who is... Fucking amazing, my wrestler of the year. And look at him. He has not lost a step since they changed his name. Yeah, was it fantastic? No. But I understand why they did it. And he's doing amazing stuff. But it's Imperium that moves on. Who will they face? Uh, we find out. Because the winners of the final match will face them in the semi-finals of the Tag Team Tournament. Legado Del Fantasma versus Maximum Male Models. Hmm, I wonder who's going to win this one. Uh, this was relatively short. Fair enough. Pretty much a job match, if I'm being honest. Although, I do, in a guilty way, enjoy a little bit of the Maximum Male Models and what they do. I quite like the stupid camp nature of it. It's fun, you know. Uh, they would have really done well back in the 80s and 90s, you know, before the Attitude Era kicked in, the new era of WWF. I feel like they would have been perfectly placed there because fans would have just naturally fucking hated them. Um... But yeah, they jobbed out, obviously, to Legado, which is the right thing to do. And by the way, Zelina Vega was at ringside. She was at the announced desk. Uh, she said she's going to be in the Rumble. And my God, she is 
just something else, isn't she? Absolutely spectacular. Uh, the only other real storyline that went throughout this entire show, of course, was Sami Zayn, who was told to get out by the tribal chief when he went into kind of, uh, you know, ask what was going on with last week, and Tribal Chief was like, how dare you question me, get out, and then Paul Heyman was like, yo, better if he pisses on the outside than on the inside. Interesting analogy coming from Paul Heyman, but he makes everything work. So, of course, he invites Sami Zayn back in, essentially apologises to him, says, get the car ready, get all the stretch limousines and whatever ready, because as soon as we've done this contract signing, we're getting out of Dodge. The contract signing happens. No, it doesn't, actually. Roman Reigns puts his feet up on the desk. We're waiting for Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens just arrives out of nowhere, jumps him from behind, beats the shit out of all of them, stunners him, pop up power bombs him through the table, and then gets out of Dodge as Sami Zayn finally arrives all too late to get involved and just kind of stands there looking dumbfounded with a contract and no doubt very clever just slowly cranking the chain stirring the pot what's gonna happen next i like this it's it's very edgy and you know the fact that the show went off the air with kevin owens stood there in a the crowd the big jr banner it just gave me feels it was a really cool image and it was very nice to see kevin owens get one over because obviously He's been taking a bit of a kick in lately from the bloodline. So they're building very nicely. We've only got a week to go until the Royal Rumble. You've got Raw 30th Anniversary, which is going to be very interesting. Especially with the Acknowledge Me ceremony. What are they going to do with Sami Zayn? Are they going to pull the trigger finally? Or are they just going to let it keep dragging out? Very interesting. And there's a moment as well, right at the end, where Kevin Owens just looks at Sami Zayn and goes, yeah, and smiles at him and nods and leaves. And I wonder if they might make a bigger deal of that than maybe it actually was meant to be. Because Roman Reigns could be like, I saw him smiling at you. What the fuck's going on there? So, you know, like I say, stirring the pot, good storytelling, and a great spectacular finish to what was a pretty decent SmackDown overall. It's so easy to watch, and a big reason for that, like I say every week, is because it's two hours long, for fuck's sake. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching the SmackDown review. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. Obviously, it'd be great to try and get our subs up even more. Thank you so much for getting us over the 600 mark. I'm unbelievably blessed that even two or three people would watch my content much less that many at one point or another and i'm truly grateful for that apologies that i'm still full of illness but hopefully on the mend very very soon and i'll continue to churn out as much content as possible a couple of interviews dropping this week as well and a couple of interviews next week and some cheeky little surprises for you as well so now is definitely a good time to sub to our channel from myself Aaron X, thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you very soon for more content from the wrestle plug